नमस्ते नमस्ते एवरीवन वेलकम मेरी आवाज ठीक आ रही है एक थम्स अप दे सकते हैं थैंक यू थैंक यू वेलकम एवरीवन टू ऑनलाइन सत्संग विद श्री अनिश सभी का बहुत बहुत स्वागत है ये जो ऑनलाइन सत्संग का माध्यम है श्री अनिश जी के साथ ये एक इनिशिएटिव है साधो आश्रम की तरफ से सत्संग की वाइब्रेशन सत्संग की एनर्जीज Uh, को सभी तक पहुंचाने का uh, चाहे ऑनलाइन ही क्यों ना हो बट सत्संग की एनर्जी ऐसी होती है कि ऑनलाइन हो चाहे फिजिकल हो uh, वो हर किसी तक पहुंच ही जाती है एंड दिस इज आल्सो टू हेल्प सीकर्स जो साधक हैं उनके जो क्वेश्चंस हैं जो गहरे क्वेश्चन साधना को लेकर आध्यात्मिक यात्रा को लेकर जो गहरे क्वेश्चन होते हैं वी वॉन्ट टू ब्रिंग दोज क्वेश्चंस एंड आज दोज क्वेश्चन डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम श्री अनिश सो दैट द जर्नी मे प्रोग्रेस ऑन द स्पिरिचुअल पाथ एंड इफ यू आर ज्वाइनिंग अस फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम then uh, you may also send us your question the link of the form is in the chat box this is our 12th episode and we have uploaded all our online satsangs on our youtube channel you will find the link of the youtube channel also in the chat box so if you go to the channel you can watch all the previous episodes on different and various questions being asked by sadhaks from all over the world so without taking much time now i would uh, uh, now let's start our 12th episode and i would like to invite uh, shri anish on this beautiful sunday morning to join us anish ji please we are all eagerly waiting to have your darshan namaste good morning everybody namaste anish ji namaste um uh, shwati is my audio clear to you it it is an issue yes yes wonderful Absolutely. so happy to see all the friends on sunday morning um we are joining this call today from lonavala uh, the room in which i am sitting i must describe you right now the scene here and then we'll enter into the the questions today uh i'm sitting in a room here and all around me are clouds descending uh guess the monsoon seasons have started here uh i just opened the window a little bit and the clouds started coming inside the room yeah so if you are sitting at hot hot regions warm regions i just thought i must uh, you know share this this side of the drishya the scenery to you to bring some coolness to you yeah <laughs> yes great to see you all and um, with that swati ji we can uh, start the program yes sanish while i'm projecting i'll request everyone if you can keep your cameras open if possible it will be nice because in satsang it's always beautiful to be face to face Okay. So, is my screen visible? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, this is our first question from two people. One is Rohan from Gurgaon, and the other one has kept himself anonymous from Noida. He is asking, "I am a businessman with family to take care of. I have to focus on the success of my business." but too much ambition of business and money does not does not allow me to be peaceful i am a simple person with simple needs according to my understanding too much focus on material objects and wealth is against spiritual growth please guide how do i balance both material success and spiritual growth wonderful wonderful let's uh, look at it this way you asked uh, too much focus on business you are a family person and too much focus on business uh, does not allow you to be in peace now point number 1 here if you focus on anything too much you become obsessive too much here means becoming obsessive about that subject 
the thoughts about that subject the the obsession of continuous emotion about that subject will always cause a problem today you feel unpeaceful not being at peace because too much focus on business tomorrow if you just change this subject even if you become obsessive about spiritual pursuits even that will cause non peace in yourself here the issue is not the business please understand this we are human beings we have been given this body we are householders we have been given the responsibility of the family we live in the society there is some responsibility we have towards that also we live in a nation we have some dharma towards nation also so these are all our dharmas at individual level we must take care of all the dharmas that has been given to us the problem is not the vyapar which is business or taking care of the family the problem is obsessive focus on that as i said anything in your life if becomes obsessive there is a problem because this whole life is a great and phenomenal play of creating and maintaining a balance the great buddha called it the middle path madhya marga middle path means when your mind is in the center it's not going into this extreme or that extreme most of the time on the spiritual journey i have seen first people are extremely obsessive obsessive about their personal gains so in the world the entire focus obsession is about what's in it for me absolute selfishness obsessive selfishness we want more money we want more name and fame we are obsessive about it the whole social media is obsessive about us making into a celebrity and then the pendulum of the mind shift to the extreme other end if we enter into the spiritual path i meet people who become extremely obsessive about their spiritual pursuits so they are neither successful here nor successful there and by success what do i mean by success i mean deep peace unbound joyfulness expanding heart they don't achieve this because of this obsession so that's problem number 1 please focus it is not the subject that is causing the problem and subject in your case is business it's not the business that is causing the problem it's your attitude towards that so that's point number 1 point number 2 if you think this business is all for yourself the money that you are earning from this business is all for yourself then it will tire you this is this is uh, there are nuances to it please try and understand every human being when we take birth nature you can call it divine you can call it god is nature or god or divine has bestowed us with some gifts every human being has some gifts which we get by the divine when we take birth what do we do with that gift is the whole question and if we are able to utilize that gift for the well being of all that's where the spiritual journey will progress please listen to this very very carefully i'm repeating we all have been given certain gifts if we utilize those gifts for the well being of the all if that is the attitude we are carrying whatever gift that ha- that has been given to us then we will be able to progress on the spiritual journey so in your case as i hear the gift that you have received from the nature from the divine is let's say to do good business because everybody is not able to do good and effective business earning the money is not everybody's capability lot of people try that but they're not really able to do that to the satisfactory level consider this as your divine gift that divine has given you this gift to earn money now if you utilize this gift only for yourself which means i me myself and my family and that's the limited world view that i have the four five people of your close family 
if you utilize this gift only for that it will cause burden on you it will tire you it will seem as a burden responsibility that you have to do and then the mind will start to tell you that this is not in align with your spiritual journey because you know inside your inner self knows that this gift you are only utilizing for your self gain for your immediate family's gain and that is not the point it doesn't work like that because the gift that has been given to you you can only sharpen those gifts and use those tools those gifts and tools that has been given to you for your spiritual journey these gifts were not given to us to maintain a family or maintain the self only these gifts were given to us as tools to progress on the spiritual journey but unfortunately in the world we start to utilize these gifts only for self gain only for material pursuits are you are you following hence do not drop this gift the fundamental mistake the sadhak does the meditator does will try to drop the gift now please do not drop the gift but expand the beneficiaries of the gift right now the beneficiary of the gift is you and probably your immediate family expand the beneficiaries in bharatiya culture we have always called vasudeva kutumbakam this whole world is my family utilize your gift of doing good business earning ability to earn money for the well being of all expand it and you will realize that will become your sadhana path that will become the your spiritual journey because spiritual journey is all about breaking the shackles of the limited iness which we call ego breaking the shackles and the boundaries of the ego and expanding it so today in your boundary in your iness in your ego is you maybe along with this in this cage of ego is your family your immediate family but expand this cage start to cover larger community in this people whom you do not know the entire nation as the boundaries of this cage starts to expand the whole world will become your family and then you will realize the cage is gone the cage of the ego is then gone isn't that the whole pursuit of spiritual journey that i just don't want to be limited in my thought about my individual i construct which i call the ego construct do you follow that is the reason that is the reason the gifts that has been given to us must be utilized for the well being of the all if you will look into our great tradition there is a whole process let's say we call it dana seva why have we created these concepts of dana and seva because our rishis realized that a lot of people will receive the divine gift of let's say earning wealth or utilizing their bodies for the well being of all which means using the body's effort shram physical effort to do seva to serve some people not just their own self and their individual families to serve other people also it's the gift and the day you start to utilize this gift for the well being of all your spiritual journey will take off on that very day but mind you remember the mind will confuse you the mind will say that oh my family or my business is troubling me and i'm not at peace and hence i'm not able to follow the spiritual journey this is the limited ego's way of thinking the limited ego thinks like that limited ego does not realize the gift has been given to you for the service of all do you follow and if you start to do that that is only when the real spiritual journey of yourself will take off before that whatever you are doing in the name of spiritual journey is more like preparing the ground preparatory background work the the plane has still not taken off remember the plane of the journey will only take off when you realize and utilize the gift 
for the well-being of all and not drop the gift yeah so the abilities that has been given to you please feel gratitude for these abilities yeah these abilities will bring you peace tomorrow the day you start to expand this horizon the same gifts the same business will bring you much joy and much peace tomorrow if you expand these boundaries because all we want to do is expand our boundaries all of us we want to become we want to enlarge ourselves we want to become endless and this endlessness will only happen once we start to expand the boundary of of this self or or this ego self when more and more people start to become part of your family then a stage also comes when you travel anywhere in the world and you feel at home you meet anybody on the road stranger you feel that you know them they they feel they seem familiar because the boundaries are expanded that's the process that's the path that we have to take yeah please think about it contemplate on this because this is truly the way forward yeah i hope it gives you some insight into this whole matter thank you thank you anishi we now move on to our next question is it visible yes so our question is from taranjit ji from amritsar and it says i'm in a catch 22 situation i have a firm unshakable belief that without deep meditation the inner journey cannot be undertaken but i have an extreme inner resistance and habit of procrastination towards me meditation for last 40 years i am unable to overcome it the advices of most wisest people like stop resisting your tendency stop fighting with yourself start with one minute a day have failed to help me i have heard that there are other paths as well besides meditation but i don't find them appealing i'm stuck what is the way forward for me please help you see another uh, play and trick of the mind here 40 years the mind is trying to go into deep meditation because the mind believe the mind strongly believes that without deep meditation there is no spiritual journey 40 years the mind is trying to do that it's not happening at the same time the other path that exist mind says that is not appealing to me so do you follow that the mind does not want you to move we need to understand the nature and the behavior and the functioning of our mind vedanta says your mind is the creator of your reality whatever reality you are experiencing right now in a reality or outer reality it's the mind that is creating that reality that reality does not exist that reality in in reality the reality does not exist but the mind is creating its own reality that's what vedanta says that's what buddha also realized when he made the statement that you are what you think which means we are nothing but some total of all the thoughts and the emotions that we have thought and felt in our life so mind is the whole game here please follow this please look into the tricks of the mind it neither allowed you to do meditation for 40 years and it says all the other parts are non appealing it wants you to be to just stay where it is where you are it doesn't want you to move please look at this trick of the mind carefully it just doesn't allow you to move especially on the spiritual journey mind does not want you to move because there is reason spiritual journey is all about 
transcending the mind zone you start to become master of the mind you start to see the tricks of the mind you start to control and train the mind you start to end if the situation demands you start to say to the mind please get aside you're not needed right now mind becomes a secondary component of your being a utilitarian component of your being mind doesn't like that mind wants to be the hero mind wants to be in control mind wants to be in the driving seat of your life always want to be in the driving seat mind wants to control your actions behavior and thoughts mind does not want you to control your actions behaviors and thought it's a fight of supremacy between mind and your inner self fight about supremacy who's supreme and because mind wants to be the supreme and mind is really powerful let me tell you it's not a small object it's not a easy object to deal with it's a very strong power because mind is what is creating this reality it has the power to create the world that you experience around yourself it has the power to create the world inside you that you are experiencing every day it is very powerful phenomena we are talking about meditation meditation is a deep process it will happen in due course of time but before that at least we must understand how our mind works how our mind plays tricks with us first we need to understand that but most of the time we make a mistake without understanding the functioning of this machine we try to jump into meditation then we learn some meditation techniques and we practice those techniques or we try to practice those techniques but nothing happens we waste 40 years of our life nothing happens because we did not do the the core deep work the first work was observing and understanding how this machine works if if you know that if you put your finger in an electric socket with a switch on you get a shock and you don't do it again you don't do it again for the rest of your life because you have experienced how the electricity works what are the laws of electricity you you realize that you acquired the gyana the knowledge of that now you are able to deal with electricity use it to light the bulb you know switch on the fan and all the rest of it but with mind we've not done that we've not done the mechanics to understand the what are the mechanics of the mind classic mistake yeah so that's point number 1 please start to look into the functioning and the way it operates and it tricks us number 1 number 2 that which has not happened for the last 40 years of your life and 40 years is a very long time sir that which has not happened a path that you want to take because it's your firm belief you said it's your firm belief that without deep meditation there is the journey cannot happen it's your firm belief but please look into this that which has not happened the path that has not worked for you for 40 years let me tell you it will not work for you 40 years is a great proof that this path will not work for you at least the way you are approaching it either you change the path or you change the approach two things you have to do either of this either change the path meditation is one path or change the approach towards meditation you decide what you want to do but then what are the other options that you have at this stage of your life when you already invested 40 years into this process what are the other options that you have? you see spiritual journey is the most easiest process on earth much easier than maybe cooking food it's a very easy process because it's straight it's simple it's uh, the roads are not winding here it's a very direct straight road it's a very simple process but again let me bring the mind element here mind has the tendency to make it complicated mind has the tendency to make everything complicated yeah 
So what are the other options? What are the other other paths that you have that you can take to to awaken your intelligence? Yeah, to illuminate your yourself. See, one of the easiest and the great path that that I feel is the path of seva. Path of seva. But before that, there are certain ground rules. There are certain ground rules that are essential for any path that you take for spiritual awakening. There are some essential set rules. You take the path of meditation or devotion or karma yoga or a jnana yoga. There are some set rules and the common essential factors here. Let me share those common essential factors today with you. In my own sadhana, I've seen and in the sadhana of hundreds and thousands of people around me, which whom I meet every day, I see this process is working. The ground rules here. First, let's focus on the ground rule. Ground rule number one. You must have a deity that you believe in. What is a deity? It's a divine form. It's a divine with the form. Don't approach divine with the formless. Any form that you like. Be it Krishna, be it Rama, be it Buddha, be it Shiva, be it Shakti, be it Devi, be it a tree. In this culture, we also pray to the trees. Be it a river. Sacred Ganges. Huh? We call it Divine Mother. Huh? Be it a mountain. There are mountains we call Mahadev Mountain in Kashmir. Any divine entity with a form is a deity. That's the top. You must have a divine with the form as your residing deity, the deity in which you believe. Why am I saying this? Because these deities are not the constructs of the mind. These deities are the energy phenomena. As you connect to these energy phenomena, they start to give you power. They start to give you strength. They are real. They are more real than you and me. They are as real. In my experience, I've experienced that. I experience that every day. They're really real. If you look into the question that you ask or the state that you are in, one of the conditions that you are suffering from is a lack of self-will. That's the reason you're not able to pursue what you want to pursue. Two, lack of strength. Shakti kam hai, lack of strength. Lack of self-will and lack of strength. Where would you get the energy to energize your will and your strength? I'm asking. Where will you get that energy? Because your mind does not want to give you the energy. The mind wants you to take the energy away. So what is the source of your energy now? Deity. Deity becomes the source of your energy. You start to download, receive the energy from the deity, which then propels your self-will and gives you shakti, gives you strength to follow the path which the mind is resisting. Each word is important here. To follow the path which the mind is resisting or rejecting. This Shakti, this power, this energy that you receive from the deity will start to give you strength to make you or to, to enable you to remove the obstacles. For removing the obstacles, you need energy. So deity, number one. Number two is the Guru in the physical form again. That's number two. Maybe you have guru which who is not in the physical form. I do not know. It's great to have a have a devotion to to a guru without the physical form, who's gone, who's left this planet Earth, who's no more in the embodied form. That's all right. You can have deep affinity connection with that guru, deep devotion, deep reverence for that guru. That's great. That's beautiful. That becomes another source of energy. But practically, you will need or you must have a guru in the physical form. Very, very important because that then becomes the second source of great energy that you receive, the great guidance that you start to receive. Yeah. Otherwise, as I said, mind is extremely powerful. The tricks of the minds are endless. We'll get stuck. Yeah. So that's number two. Number three is the satsang. 
be in the satsang zone as much as possible. What is a satsang? This, what we are doing, is called satsang. When you sit with anybody whom you consider little wiser than you, you sit with that person in the presence of that person, and you start to understand and explore the dimensions of the spiritual journey, dimensions of, let's call it life, because to me, spiritual journey and the journey of the world are not two different things. It's one, one integrated process. So satsang is a process in which we start to understand the nuances of the life. We start to receive the guidance and we also start to receive the bulb, the strength of Guru's sadhana. That starts to empower us further. Yeah. So that's number three. Uh, that's number three, yes. Uh, satsang with the wise ones, whosoever you find. Yeah. And then comes comes number four, which is the the guru might give you a certain small practices to do. Some small practices to do. Then you start to follow those practices, whatever that is. Maybe it's a, you know, sitting and just drinking a cup of chai, looking into the Nothing less. Maybe that's a practice. Maybe the practice the Guru might give you, just walk in the garden, in the park, looking at the trees. Maybe that's a great practice. You might find some of these practices extremely simple, but they're very profound. Yeah. So fourth element is the practice. It could be anything smaller that the Guru would like to give. And the fifth here is the Sangha. Sangha is the community of seekers around. People who are on the similar journey. People who are intently on the similar path. Because when we enter into any such process all alone, we get tired. We need strength of the people around us. It is always a collective process. <coughs> It is just not a solo process. There are parts of the spiritual process that you do solo on your own. But there are large parts of the spiritual process that are enabled in the community of seekers, in the Sangha. If you focus on this, you will see all the, all the greater schools of spiritual wisdom on this earth. Any school of spiritual wisdom on this earth, which we find uh, great or deep, will always work around a community. They will always build a community together, the Sangha together, the set of people who are on the path together. They've always recommended that, be it, uh, you know, the Bhakti traditions of Sanatana Dharma, be it the Sikh tradition, be it the Buddhist tradition, any tradition you look at, be it the Sufi tradition, any tradition you look at. Yeah. Not to be missed, the angle of community here. Now, how do you plug these five essentials as the foundation for your journey ahead is up to you. But in my understanding, unless you're able to fix these five as the foundation of your spiritual journey, it is very difficult to achieve the progress or even to walk the process properly. Very difficult. Yeah. So, so for the sake of clarity, let me quickly mention these ones again. The five essentials. Number one, the deity in the physical, the divine in the physical form, the deity. Guru in the physical form. Satsang with the Guru. The practice that the Guru, the teacher might want to give you the support of the Sangha, the community. This five, we've got five fingers, we are Panch Tattvas, there's a lot of dimensions of five in, in spiritual wisdom. When these five come together, that's when the journey starts to happen, the way it must. Yeah. So please think about this and start to fix these layers as you wish, in whichever tradition you want to be in whichever school of spiritual wisdom you want to go. But these fix are, to me, extremely essential. Without these, very difficult. Yeah. Without these, the mind loops. 
the play of the, the great play of the mind never ends and uh, we are not yet uh, vivekashila enough meaning intelligent enough intuitive enough to cut through the web of the mind's illusions and see the path yeah so consider this you might want to hear it again each word will give you some message some meaning some strength yeah before we uh, enter into the next question we, we have time i want all of us to just close our eyes for two minutes just close your eyes for two minutes sit with your spine straight take a deep breath and let go one more deep breath in One more deep breath in. And let go. Just remain still. Let these words pour into your consciousness deep. Let this energy that you're receiving in this satsang go into your consciousness deep. Let this jnana the understanding that you are able to receive go into your consciousness daily. Make a silent prayer from the depths of your heart, a silent prayer to your gurus, to your gods that may this wisdom becomes your living reality. May the wisdom of the rishis become your living reality. May the light of the divine illuminates every part of your mind and your heart. Let there be no darkness. Let there be no undercar. May we all become pure enough, open enough to receive this light, to receive this light of pure wisdom, precaution. This is the true purpose of our life. Om Tat Sat. Om Tat Sat. Om Tat Sat. We can slowly open our eyes now. Thank you. Thank you. 
looking at the time, Swati, um, I think we can take one more question quickly and then yes. Yes. <coughs> Our next question, Anushi, is from Yogeshwar from Dharamshala. He's saying, Pranam, I feel the truth of what you say. When you are speaking something, it's clear like sun in the daylight. However, again and again, it feels mind takes me for a ride. Sometimes the outer situation may seem different, but inner emotional state and mental state feel the same, almost cyclical. Can you please share a step-by-step -step process to make your potent guidance a living reality? How can this truth that you speak become my life? What is it within me that obstructs this process? Yeah. I would say that... Uh... Our tendency to trust our mind is just too much. And that is what obstructs the process. Our tendency to trust our mind. For everything else, we have doubts. We have doubts for the divine. People come and ask me, was Krishna a reality? Did he really happen? Was Rama a reality? Did he ever happen or not? Is Hanumanji a reality? And who is Shiva? Is he a reality? Or an alien? We have doubts about our gods, our divine energy sources. But we don't have doubt on our mind. Whatever it says, we believe it too much. We tend to give our, our trust very easily to our mind, to the thoughts and the narrations of the mind. Our mind narrates us the stories. If you see, if you can observe, your mind narrates you certain stories. You tend to believe them. You don't believe what you are able to see in front of you. The Sangha, the Guru, the, the Ashram. Doubt comes on them sometimes, probably. But doubts don't come on the story, the narrative that our minds tell us. Please look into this. There is something. We are believing, we are trusting that which is constantly changing. The mind, the thoughts, the narrative of the mind is constantly changing and we are trusting that. And that's how we get stuck. You say, when you listen to me, every word that I say becomes crystal clear to you like the sun. You know why does that happen? Because probably when you listen to me, when I talk to you, at that particular moment, for some minutes, you're able to keep your mind's narrative, which means the stories of the mind aside. And you have the ability to totally be present in that moment with me. And in that presence, you're able to receive the words and look at the crystal clarity of the life. Because the narrative and the stories of the mind are powerful for that moment. But after some time, the stories come back and you entertain them on its own. Mind is not powerful on its own. But with your support, mind is very powerful. On its own, it's a dull entity. But with your support, it's bigger than the divine in your experience. What do I mean when I say with your support? Because you allow it to narrate you the stories, because you get entertained by those stories. Those stories are the food for your ego. 
your aham loves those stories your aham is fed on those stories those negative narratives of the mind the day you stop listening to that the day you stop giving it energy the day you realign yourself from that actually commanding your mind that i don't want this story again because you yourself have said and you realize that all of this moves in a cyclical loop it's cyclical yes it is cyclical mind's movement is cyclical like the prakriti the nature every season comes in a cycle similarly mind's the movement is also cyclical few days you will not give it energy and you will be more rooted in yourself in your sadhana the cycle will pass and then mind's story will begin again you have a choice to listen to that story or to reject that story but the moment you actually listen to the story you sit to listen to the story of the mind that he is telling you the moment you sit to listen to that story you are caught you got a phas gaya uski kahani ke chakkar and the loop starts again this is a cyclical movement the whole process of our journey our sadhana is to break this cyclical movement how do you break this cyclical movement huh? at the weakest link it is easy to break that what is the e weakest link the weakest link is the time and the day when it starts to interrupt your sadhana when it starts to say knock knock i have a story for you maybe this person you're talking to you know he's not more smart than you maybe this person who talks to you they are trying to give you you know more knowledge they are trying to show you that they are more knowledgeable etc 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 it starts with that a thought if you can just identify and really instruct it i'm not interested in your story its game is over it will come back again to hit you to give you another story but every story please understand is the story of the mind because your anubhava your experience is something else you have experienced meditative states those are real states that you've experienced you have experienced presence those are the real states of experiencing presence those are real anubhavas but then you get caught and entangled in the story that's where the problem is because i know you you are very intelligent you can look into the stories but then after a point you allow the stories to take over aap kamzor ban jate ho aap victim ban jate ho aap story ko apne upar haavi hone dete ho you you think you behave like a victim and you allow the story to become more powerful what is the spiritual process here it's just that i don't want any story as simple as that i am looking at my shiva i don't want any narrative it's my shiva i am looking at this beautiful nature i am part of this this nature is nurturing me that's it no i don't need any story i don't need any story oh am i wasting my time oh is sadhana happening oh uh, am i able to fulfill my desires all kinds of stories to make a choice please do you want to empower you the stories more or do you empower your anubhava more the experiences that you've already had what do you want to empower more you can empower either of this you can give your energy to either of this your anubhava live in your anubhava or the stories yeah sadhana is a very beautiful balance yogeshwar you remember in bharatiya tradition we talked about four purusharthas dharma artha kama moksha four purusharthas 
what does it mean why did rishis talk about the four purusharthas because they believed and they said and they taught us that each of these four dimensions are important in life if you reject any dimension there is a problem if you ignore any dimension there is a problem if you suppress any dimension there is a problem these four dimensions you have to integrate and make a certain balance yeah dharma is this balance that i'm talking about is dharma not feeding my energy to the mind's narratives and the story is dharma believing in my own anubhava is dharma trying to stay stable is my dharma right understanding the laws of nature is dharma recognizing the cyclical loop of mind's activity is dharma knowing that the at the weakest link the mind can be broken is dharma receiving the energy from the deity from the god from the guru from the sangha from the practice from the satsang is dharma this is all that point number one number two earth our wealth rishi said that's also important what does it mean it means is my sustainability taken care of or no our sustainability is taken care of we are ashram vasis ashram has taken care of our sustainability so artha is integrated there kama fulfillment of desires rishis are saying don't suppress the desires with full consciousness with full aware awarefulness please enjoy your desires aap bhogiye but jag ke with awareness you fulfill your desires there is no problem with that but we try to either postpone the desire push it into the future or suppress it or ignore it but then it becomes a toofan a storm and we are caught in the storm why do we allow it to become a storm why can't we just look into it and when the right time comes we fulfill the desire whatever that desire is still rooted in the dharma and moksha all through this journey this aspiration for moksha is always there it's always energizing me it's always guiding me simple process i keep reminding myself of that and i don't allow my mind to become obsessive for either of these components you follow these are four components dharma artha kama moksha if you allow your mind to get stuck with one you allow the mind to win so in some people the mind will get stuck to let's say the the some kind of worldly desire will become obsessive about it in some cases it will become obsessive about earth wealth we see people around in the world obsessive about wealth no matter how much they have they still want more then you see some people who become obsessive about moksha problem again problem we've lost the balance the balance is when i'm able to integrate all these four together in an absolute perfect balance that's the work that we do how do we do this just become little more guru mukhi just become little more ishwar mukhi guru mukhi means when you pay more attention more energy to the teachings of the guru and apply it in your life when you give more energy to the teachings of the ishwara and then apply it in your life right become little more guru mukhi or ishwar mukhi that's the way forward right you you said the you asked about the steps what are the steps that i must follow these are the four steps you wish for integrating dharma artha kama moksha is the step understanding the tricks of the mind is the step not giving in to the stories and narratives of the mind is the step not giving your beliefs to the doubt your trust to the doubt is a step giving more trust to your own anubhava is a step these are the steps 
yeah and when you do that you start to cut through the maze that the mind creates these are the steps yeah and beneath these also there are the steps and those steps are purification 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 can I purify my body more? Body is an integral element. Can I purify my body more? How do I purify the body? With my ahar, the food that I take, with the yoga that I do, with the activity that I do with the body, with the seva that I do using the body, I purify the body. Right? With the karma yoga, I purify the body. The more you are able to purify the body, without becoming obsessive about it again, the more body starts to give strength to your Anubhavas. Body starts to give, get integrated into this process. It starts to support you in this process. You can't just work with the mind and leave the body alone. Body and mind are integrated with each other. Then you purify the mind. How do you purify the mind? Sing praises of the Lord. Listen to the satsangs more. Apply your mind in Ishwar Karya more. Apply your mind in selfless service more. Mind will object. Mind will resist. But the more you apply the mind into these processes, the more mind will start to become purified. Purified means you will start to gain more control over the mind rather than mind gaining more control over you. So start to purify the mind. We call it training the mind, training the monkey. So start to train this monkey mind and these are the steps for that. And whenever the mind starts to become a little agitated, listen to this again. Listen to whatever gives you right direction more. Listen to that again and again. Repetition is extremely useful, by the way. You think you've read a book, you think you've read a scripture, you think you've heard me once, or this answer, you've heard it once and that's over. No. With mind, you have to play with him. his rules also. And mind's rule is repetition. The way it comes and tracks you, controls you cyclically. You also use the cyclical process to control the mind. What is the cyclical process? You design your 24 hours in such a way that you repeat your own Anubhava. You repeat the remembrance of your own Anubhava. You repeat the remembrance of your Guru Vakya. You repeat it. With this repetition, you'll be able to cut that cycle. Jaysa bolte na? Aag ko aag se hi kata jata with this repetition. So japa is a repetition. With this, we cut the cycle off. So listen to this again, as many times as you want. It's not a repeat. We forgetting, we are coming back to it again. You're forgetting, we are coming back to it again. And this process will continue for some time. And believe you me, a day will come when you will win. The mind will say, this guy is too stubborn. He doesn't listen to me anymore. He listens to his Shiva, his Guru more than me. And mind will say, all right, let this victim go. And from that day onwards, the victim will, the victimhood will disappear. And you'll become a hollow bamboo. That's the journey. Yeah, think about it. When we are down, it seems difficult. But remember, nothing stays forever. Yeah, nothing stays forever. If I'm in a valley right now, soon I'll be on the peaks also. Valley is an indication that now the journey towards the peak starts. So never be afraid of the valleys. The only thing is don't run away. Because in the valley, if you run away, the game is over. Right. Remember, everything is cyclical. From the valley, we'll go to the peak also. And then there is a peak from there, no turning back. That's what we are aiming for. Think about it. Listen to this again if you want to meditate over this. Yeah. With that, I think uh, we've come to the end of this, this satsang. I request everybody before we end to 
kindly open your screens, uh, cameras. Let's have a collective version of each other. All the beautiful, divine, spiritually charged faces on Sunday mornings. What else do we need in life? Is there anything else we need in life than these joyful, supremely meditative and charged faces on a Sunday morning? The hearts filled with love for the divine and uh, willingness to walk this path of Satya Chitta Anand. With that, my love and blessings to all of you, wherever you are. May the divine keeps guiding you, empowering you, giving you enough motivation and willingness to walk against all obstacles, give all the tests if necessary, and finally realize who we really are. Om Tat Om Tat Sat. Om Tat Sat. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.